on how to uh, create the account, add devices, and uh, configure your activities. Uh, and then also we'll go into more creating some additional uh, activities such as maybe a custom uh, for perhaps maybe an IP cam of some sort. Uh, so that's so we'll be covering that today. And then uh, once we've done the setup, we're going to also um, go through the actual control of um, all the components uh, using the Harmony Elite and the uh, mobile app. So the lineup. So we have the Harmony Elite, which is our flagship uh, remote. So the, basically the replacement of the ultimate home. So it has um, all the capabilities that the um, Harmony Ultimate Home uh, also had. Um, a big uh, difference here is, well, of course, we've enhanced the, the on-remote UI uh, tremendously. Um, what you see here is we brought back the dedicated activity and device buttons, much more convenient. Um, you can see that the transport control has now been uh, brought beneath the screen instead of on the top. And another great feature, which uh, I'll be covering in today's setup, is home control buttons. And that will really allow you to uh, have your customers very quickly uh, turn off uh, any smart lighting or open blinds and so forth, um, as well as you know, any guest or maybe uh, you know, someone that's uh, taking care of the house. So that's the Harmony Elite. Then followed by the Harmony Companion which again also comes with uh, the same hub, um, doesn't have backlit buttons, no LCD screen, of course. Um, however, it does um, have the home control button. So this is the replacement really of the smart control. As you can see, it also has the home control buttons, which can be very customizable. Uh, again, uh, no backlit, but the um, advantage to that is the battery will last um, up to two years. Um, it's a very simple pencil of battery. And of course, we also uh, carry still the standalone hub, uh, which is just for uh, using a dedicated um, phone or tablet to control. And of course, for very um, uh, small setups, we of course still carry the Harmony 650. Again, that's only IR based, and um, that of course you know does limit your setup uh, nowadays with, with different. Um, types of control, of course, home control, um, but we're also talking about things like Bluetooth control that uh, just there's more and more devices that um, actually do not um, allow to be controlled through IR and only Bluetooth. So that's the lineup uh, in a nutshell. So I just want to quickly uh, resurface what's really under the hood of these Harmony uh, remotes um, that we're covering today. So one thing that we don't really market, but it's a very important feature to mention, is smart state technology. And what smart state technology really is, to sum it up, is the Harmony has the capability to really track the state of the devices in a more efficient way. And, it, um, and this is uh, not two-way communication. We just really understand all these AV devices. And we're talking about devices from 2015, but also things from 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, our database is not just a, a, a simple database of you know, 275 devices. We carry all kinds of values so that you know, the installer, when you're installing this, you don't have to tinker with adjusting the time for a device to warm up or how quickly it can switch through inputs or any of that. We, we have a team of dedicated device specialists who I actually work with myself um, that around the clock, nothing but promoting devices in our database, improving them, reaching out to members on our forum, uh, doing research. Um, again, what we also do is we do store visits to really double check to make sure that every new TV is properly been tested and accurately set up in our database. Uh, so that we can not only control them, but we can do things like launch Netflix on certain devices, launch the smart TV UI without making it complicated for your customer. That's all kind of taken care of in the smart state technology. You might have a device that maybe doesn't have discrete power or inputs. Again, the smart state technology under the hood really takes care of understanding which input it is on and how many inputs it needs to switch to get to the next source and so forth. Um, of course, our hub-based products, they have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and we are using a, a proprietary um, 
RF technology um, to really you know talk to the um, hub. So that's something um, I can uh, you know talk to a little bit once we go through the setup and, and how that exactly works. But it's basically the RF technology that we implement um, allows us to you know make sure we provide a closed cabinet solution um, and kind of keep the hub uh, out of sight um, uh, when you have a closed cabinet solution. Um, we also have, of course, the mini blasters that can be set up um, for the TV. Um, and we also have a precision IR kit, which really allows you to stick on these little IR leads um, on the devices, um, and that replace basically the um, mini blasters that uh, come standardly equipped. So that's what's under the hood. So just quickly covering on Wi-Fi, I really want to jump into the setup, but I just want to talk about these technologies. So we, um, we're constantly integrating um, new um, devices uh, in the home control scene. Uh, we just recently announced integration with Hunter Douglas. Uh, of course, we control Nest, Thermostat, and Protect, Honeywell Thermostats, uh, Ulight. So, uh, you, we've been controlling since 2013. We're one of the, the first to kind of integrate with them. Uh, since then, we've uh, added some uh, extra features for uh, you customers, something I'll be covering um, on my um, setup as well. And of course, Lutron, very important, the blinds, uh, the plugs, and so forth, the Caseta, August locks. Um, so that's uh, what we do with the Wi-Fi. Of course, it also gives us you know, cloud-based control, and as well, we integrate with other um, home control hubs like Insteon and SmartThings, um, and that kind of bridges on to um, Z-Wave and Zigbee uh, as well. Um, when it comes to like more, um, you know, entertainment devices, we've recently integrated IP control in Dish, which I'll be demoing here, um, as well as, of course, Sonos, Roku, something name. When it comes to Bluetooth, we've also really expanded on that. Of course, the Bluetooth, we provide that control for smart TVs for text entry, um, but we also use it to control Amazon Fire TV, um, text entry for Apple TV, um, as I mentioned, the smart TVs, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, uh, Nintendo Wii and Wii U, and of course, home theater PCs. Um, Something to mention, um, right now I'm focusing on really improving that experience. Um, I'm working directly with Plex for home theater, as well as um, looking at creating profiles for Cody. So if you do have a home theater set up, um, we are currently really working on um, improving that experience. And this is something uh, that uh, we, uh, we plan to announce on these forms uh, once we feel uh, that the experience uh, is where it should be. So these are just some examples of um, you know different types of controls and where, where the hub becomes uh, really important. So that's uh, the slide. So now what we're going to do is uh, jump into the setup. So I'm just going to briefly stop my screen sharing. There's a slight little latency there. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to bring up my mobile app here. Just bear with me for a second. All right, so what we have here is um, my little living room here, and I'm going to be going through a setup on my phone. Um, it's kind of hard to read on the camera, so I got some extra software so everyone can uh, follow um, as well by uh, on the right here, uh, you have the Harmony app. What you don't really see here is that the, the hub is positioned there. Um, what we've done now with the latest firmware that now uh, comes installed most uh, 
products that are on the shelf is there's no longer to automatically having to link the hub to the app. It automatically gets discovered. So the hub right now, because it's been factory reset, um, has been um, already put into pairing mode uh, from the get-go. So of course, what we're going to do here is we're going to set up a new hub. So we've got the Harmony app here, and as you can see, it already discovered the hub um, right out of the box. So once I've linked the hub with the app, I'm going to start entering my uh, Wi-Fi credentials. Just moving the screen here for a bit. There we go. Let that properly line up. Okay. So I'm going to put in my Wi-Fi credentials. And of course, this is required so that way uh, we, you know, have communication with the Harmony app to the hub. Um, it also, of course, allows us to control devices uh, through IP and also detect devices. Um, so there is not all devices can necessarily be controlled through IP. We're also kind of ex slowly expanding on IP control. Again, I'm really looking at that experience right now. Um, however, uh, devices that are being broadcasted, uh, we definitely are expanding on automatically detecting these devices. Um, just to you know, really help you save yourself from trying to figure out all the model numbers um, that you need to add and from adding the model numbers. So now that we've set up the Wi-Fi, we're going to create an account. So you can log in with an existing account. Um, in this session, we're just going to go ahead and uh, create an account here. So I'm just entering my account information. So this is you would use your you know your customer's uh, email. Um, again, you can also um, use your own email. We're gonna dig into the fact that yes. Um, there is no such thing as dealer login. At the end of the demo, I will, uh, the webinar, I will uh, touch on that and, and provide some uh, suggestions for the time being um, and uh, announce, uh, make some announcements on what we're, we're looking at right now. So right now, I'm, I've created the, um, my account and provided all my information. So I'm going to hit Create and accept the license agreement. So as you can see here, I have the Elite sitting right here on the cradle. It needs to be, of course, plugged in. So now that it's um, connected and um, charged up, um, the hub is now communicating to the Harmony Elite, um, ensuring that, of course, it uh, has the uh, required settings that are necessary uh, for the setup. And it also double checks with our um, servers just to see if there's a critical firmware update that needs to be installed uh, prior to setup. So now that we've uh, established that connection, we have the product uh, overview page. This is just really um, demonstrating um, how the Harmony the hub needs to be positioned. You know, it's important that, of course, you have your hub placed properly um, in the cabinet, or if it's an open cabinet solution, at least. Um, in eyesight of these uh, IR devices. So here we kind of explain that a little bit more in depth. So we're going to just skip over the product uh, info page. So the copy setup, this again is a great feature for um, many reasons. Um, of course, the, the primary reason for one is you may have a customer that wants to do an upgrade. Maybe they had a um, you know, an older Harmony, maybe that Harmony 880 from way back, or maybe it's an ultimate um, customer that wants to replace it with an Elite. So um, this feature really allows you to save a lot of time by um, allowing you to um, copy these existing settings. So um, just bear with me. I'm just going to make sure there's a couple people um, off mute. So just bear with me uh, for a second. Mute everybody. There we go. Okay, so yeah, coming back to um, the um, copying. So you can actually copy the existing account, save you a lot of time. So that's a great example. Um, this can also be used, and, and I will probably create a separate webinar on this. Um, in the nearby future to really cover some of these advantages for uh, dealer installs. 
Um, again, another example is you could create a master account. <laughs> maybe you have a specific AV stack. Maybe you always, you know, or most of the time you, you, you know, always stick with the same Denon AVR or Integra and the same Sony TV. <clears throat> so what you could do is you could create this master account where you already pre-configured how you're going to wire things and, and build things if this is a brand new uh, uh, installation at a customer's house. And then you could copy that master account and that way you already have that whole configuration. So that's another example where you can um, really uh, benefit from uh, copying these uh, existing configurations. Um, so you would just click on copy existing and then it, uh, from there it will allow you to uh, sign in. Cancel here. Bear with me. I think there's someone on mute. Excuse me. There we go. Sorry about that. So in this um, session, we're not going to copy uh, the existing um, setup. We're going to actually uh, create a new setup. So I'm going to click on um, new setup. So before I start entering my devices, you can already see that the uh, Harmony has discovered a lot of devices on my network. As you can see, it uh, discovered the Philips Hue, the Lutron, the Dish Hopper, the Sonos Play 1 and 2, my Sony TV, uh, Apple TV, Roku. Um, if there's certain devices like this is not located in this room, you can actually uncheck it as well. Um, if you have multiple Roku's, you can click the information tab and it will actually uh, provide you um, if it has a friendly name or in this case Harmony Roku or the IP address if uh, they were never provided with a friendly name. So again, a very handy feature to make sure uh, you have the right devices and of course this saves you a lot of time. So we can, you know, we give it a friendly name, Sony TV, but if you look in uh, the extra information, you can see that we've discovered the XPR65X900. Uh, but again, there's no need to reference to that for the customer. If to the customer is just their Sony TV. So we're gonna, we've selected our devices, and now we're gonna go ahead and hit next. So now um, we wanna, of course, pair the U-Bridge, detected the U-Bridge. Uh, so I'm just gonna go over there and um, hit the pair button, so everything, like I mentioned, we've got a closed cabinet solution here, so we've got the Lutron bridge and the U, I'm just gonna pair that. I also have an Xbox 360, um, we have the uh, dish down there. Everything is tucked away. Um, I have the hub here to control the TV, and then the mini blasters are inside. Again, that can be switched as well. You can decide to put the hub in the cabinet and just have one little blaster here. There's different ways of setting that up. So now that I've paired the um, U-Bridge, um, we have this other great feature, um, which in this session I won't be importing, but I just want to quickly touch on this. So this is um, U-Light Scenes, and this is, a, as of recent, we uh, now provide the user uh, with the ability to import their U-Scenes. So the Harmony will actually, under the Light tab, um, provide all the scenes that were created with the U bridge. Um, as well as if you take the Harmony Elite, I'm just gonna grab an Elite here, you can see the dedicated home control buttons uh, can also be mapped to a specific U light scene. So maybe you wanted the specific color temperature and you wanna have certain lights on or off, you could map that to one of these bulb um, buttons. So again, another great way of really um, expanding on controlling the U-Lights. I'm just gonna skip that uh, for this session. So now that I've added the U-Bridge, it's now I'm um, adding the Lutron Smart Bridge. I'm just discovering all the devices that are a, a part of the Lutron. So we have some blinds uh, set up here in the back. Okay, so now all my devices uh, have been added. Just gonna cancel out of there. So you can see it added the living room hopper, the Sonos uh, sit, uh, Play Ones that I have configured in this room, the uh, Sony TV, Roku, uh, and so forth. So the Xbox right now we're not discovering. However, in our next release, and this just you know again talks about um, how we're constantly improving this. Uh, we will be detecting the 360 and the Xbox One with our next uh, release. So again, 
it will save you time. Of course, you can manually add it. So right now, I'm just adding the Xbox 360. You can see it's been added. Um, so Denon receivers, we actually do discover Denon receivers, except for this brand new receiver that had a small little change that we've now um, resolved. So we can discover the new series as well. Um, so again, this is a 1910, but again, it's actually AVR S1910W. I just want to show if I just add it and you know forget to add the digit, it, digit there is a very easy way where we uh, compare it to our devices in our database. And you can see there it is, the AVR S910W. So um, just in case you make a little typo, there is, there is a little bit of guidance there uh, to help you. So now the AVR has been added. So I got all my devices added. Again, some of the devices, like cloud-based, um, you can manually add. Like we're not going to discover the nest at this point um, because you put in your uh, credentials. But so by clicking on the home control here, it shows you all these uh, integrations that we currently support. You can see there's Nest, there's Smart Things, Hunter Douglas, uh, Echo B thermostats, Peak, Ream, August Logs. Uh, so there you have all your home control devices. And as I was doing in this session, um, the entertainment devices are listed right on the top. Again, if you quickly plug something in or it's not discovered, you can always rescan um, the devices as well. So now we're done adding our devices. So now it's quickly saving the devices uh, to the hub. And this allows us just to quickly test to make sure that we are actually able to control the devices. And this, this just confirms that we have good placement of the uh, mini blasters and, and the hub as well. So I'm just going to hit next on the test device page. You can see here, here are some of my IR devices um, and also IP devices like the, uh, the dish. And it just allows me to confirm if I can control it. So if I hit off on the Sony TV, you can see it turns off the TV. Uh, if I hit off on the Denon, it will turn off the Denon. So you can, it, it just gives you that little quick confirmation, okay, the hub is good to go, um, and everything is placed properly. Um, again, this is not mandatory. You can you know, skip right over this. Um, so we can just hit next. Just another example, just to make sure hub is placed correctly. So the group feature is another great feature where you can um, easily group you know, all your lights and blinds. So by default, we already group all the lights that we have here. So we've got 16 lights, so we make them into one combined group um, as well as the blinds. So I'm just going to click on adding a group. So I'm going to click on the adding a lights group. So maybe I want to create a group for the kitchen. So now I can um, add my kitchen lights, very easy. So now I've selected um, all the kitchen lights. So now I can very easily turn off all the lights in the kitchen. And you can do the same thing, of course, for um, the bar, for instance. So and there's a little bar by the kitchen. So again, very easy way of uh, quickly setting up uh, the groups. We also support blind groups um, for your blinds. But um, what you can see here, there's only two, so it already created that. But if you have a, a set of blinds, this can be very beneficial. You can just create a, a group for the living room blinds and uh, the bedroom blinds and so forth. And as you can see, it's just very easy. I'm just going to create one more um, group here. Uh, create the living room. Uh, Lines here, that's already one selected here. And again, you can also create a, a group that is a combination, of course. It doesn't necessarily need to be one room. You can also do a living room plus a dining room. There we go. So I created uh, my living room and dining room lights. I right, hit next here. And now that we've set up uh, the groups, we're going to continue. So now that we've um, added all our devices, created our groups, we're going to create the activities. So we're going to suggest a watch TV activity uh, by default. And as you can see, we've already 
recommended the devices that you're going to most likely use for your watch TV, which is and this uh, for the entertainment devices, correct? I want to use my TV, my AVR, and my hopper. And also shows the name and the location of the hopper, depending on what you name the hopper. Um, what we want to do, of course, we want to add some lights um, to this activity. So I'm going to just select my living room lights and my dining room lights. There we go. I'm going to hit next. So now it's just confirming everything is powered on, which in this case it has been. Um, now we, of course, want to make sure that we uh, select the right inputs. So we're already fired, as you can hear, the input um, of the AVR. But of course, you can also um, switch that if it did not uh, select the right uh, input. In this scenario, it is definitely the cable SAT input. And then, uh, of course, the TV needs to be set to HDMI 3. So as you can see here, it automatically um, fires the input, so you uh, have a good confirmation. Like in this case, the TV is on HDMI 3, and the uh, then on is set to uh, the cable SAT input. So now that we've configured the inputs correctly, we're just going to confirm that we can um, see a picture and we heard sound. So because we're uh, controlling the hopper through IP, we just need to put in our little PIN number. It's kind of hard to read there, but I can see it because of the webcam, but it's actually showing the PIN code on the TV, which I'm entering right now. And this will allow it to establish a link with the Harmony. And now it's just uh, finalizing uh, the changes for the watch TV activity. So we, of course, also want to configure the lights, as I mentioned. So we added some living room lights. You can configure them individually, or you can say, you know, let's all put them to warm. Let's put them at like 75 or about 75. I'm going to apply that to all lights. So it just allows me to quickly change that. If you want to change an individual light, you can definitely do so as well. If it's uh, you or LifeX, um, you can, of course, change the colors as well. Um, and you can, of course, switch that back to uh, warm and cool. So the other thing I wanted to, I'm just going to go back. So you can see the lights are adjusted um, for this activity. Now, there's another great feature that's very easy to set up is when to adjust. So you can say, well, you know, my kids may watch some cartoons during the day. I don't want to pay you for all that, that high energy bill. I'm just going to make sure that it will only turn on the lights after sunset or only during the day. Um, just for the sake of demoing, I'm going to, of course, leave it at always. Activity end, again, this I'll be covering more in depth um, on uh, tomorrow's webinar uh, where I'll be um, going through some more advanced setups and programming. Um, again, two webinars back to back. Um, that webinar will be, uh, again, available um, end of uh, February most likely as well. Um, but what, I, what we're going to dig into is how we, when do you want to add an end state? So maybe when I turn off the activity, I want the lights to dim or turn brighter and so forth. So there's a bunch of things you can do with that. Um, I've decided for this activity, I want the lights to turn on for that activity. But if I hit off or switch activities, I want, I want to just uh, leave it as is. So I'm not going to test it for now. Um, so we've got the Watch TV set up, um, and of course we want to configure our favorite channels. So the favorite channels is a great feature where we could just enter our zip code, and by entering our zip code, it automatically finds uh, the different providers uh, in our area. So as you can see here, um, there is a Dish Network here um, in my area that I'm selecting here. And Based on my location, it then automatically already suggests the most popular um, favorite channels. You can unselect them. Maybe you don't like cooking, so you don't want the Food Network, um, so uh, and so forth. So you can adjust that. And you know, you of course maybe uh, you know your customer probably wants maybe more ESPN uh, channels. So you can add additional ESPN too, and uh, maybe uh, they want to. Also have Bravo for 
the teenagers in the house, so you got that. So you get a very easy way of getting your favorite channels, or you know, if it's a um, you know a younger child, you can add you know the Disney Junior channel. So a very easy way of um, simply hitting the star, and now those channels are added. Um, so saves you a lot of time, really um, enhance the experience for your customer. So now that we've saved our favorites, um, we'll be prompted to start at a specific TV station. We're gonna skip this. Again, there are some great opportunities to provide some extra watch TV activities for your customers, like a watch ESPN and so forth. Again, this is something in um, some of the advanced programming webinars that will be covered. I'm gonna skip that for this uh, session. So now I'm going to create another activity. So what we'll do is um, we're going to hit the play Xbox activity. We're going to hit our um, three devices that we need to use. I'm going to hit the, uh, it's going to you know, make sure that they're powered on. And then of course, um, it's already assuming I'm going to use HDMI 3. And then uh, for the AV receiver, it shows all the inputs. Uh, I'm gonna set it uh, to the game input here for the 360 here. And as you can see, by sending the commands, you already know uh, you're, you're good to go there. So as you can see, I very quickly set up an activity and got that, that confirmation right away as well. So you can do, um, Actually, you can do the testing activities or you can do that at the end. Right now, it's just, you know, finalizing all the changes uh, of my programming. So you don't have to do uh, a big a sync um, after. Um, it just powers everything off. It's just doing a little test to make sure it does it all power off. And then uh, it's going to start the activity again to make sure all that is working. Again, this is not mandatory. Um, it's an option there. Um, in most cases for installers, once you position hub, you're good to go. So, um, so that's done. As you can see, I created this activity, but I didn't select the light. So you can always very easily come back to the activity. And this is something uh, you can always get back to by editing the activity. So you can see here's the X Xbox activity. It's currently on. Um, and by accessing the activity here in edit mode, um, I can very easily, you know, make changes to this, um, as in like, you know, a schedule um, and so forth. Um, so I'm going to edit the start sequence, and here I can hit edit home control, and now I can say, you know, I want to add the living room lights to my activity, very easily selecting the lights. So. And because it's Xbox, maybe you want a cool green theme. So that's what I'm doing for the uh, Xbox lights here. I'm going to apply that to all of them. And I'm going to hit next there. So now that we've created the Xbox activity, we're going to click on Add Activity again. As you can see, we're really trying to save you time by already recommending these activities. They're not necessary, but most of these you're going to set up anyways, like a listen to uh, Sonos in the dining room. So just like Watch TV, um, again, this is a great example where you want to combine lights. I'm just going to quickly go through it, um, just doing a standalone Sonos activity. So just like Watch TV, we actually um, also provide the favorites for the Sonos um, player. So it, this one doesn't have many favorites here. I didn't have a chance to set that up. It's a brand new uh, Sonos here. But as you can see, I can select a, a favorite channel to start that activity. So you can create, you know, a, a dinner time jazz station or whatever and set the lights kind of a little bit more dim, kind of create these unique experiences for your customers. Again. Very cool things you can do very easily, fast for your customer. Um, again, will be covered um, in upcoming webinars. In this case, I'm just going to skip it. I'm just going to set up a uh, listen to Sonos dining room activity. As you can see there, it's been uh, created. Another great activity that we offer is a watch smart TV activity. This can be challenging um, for users um, that use their conventional remotes because you know you're switching from the cable box to the smart TV, and then you need to launch the smart TV. So this is the beauty, coming back to this smart state technology, right? The Harmony understands the status of your devices. It's gonna understand that, hey, um, I need to, uh, you know, 
set uh, an input maybe because some smart TVs have a little uh, window for the input. In this case, the, the newer Android doesn't have it, so I don't need it. Um, but what it will do is it will automatically launch the smart TV UI, and when I'm done, it will ease, switch automatically back to the uh, dish hopper, something I'll be demonstrating uh, once we're done with all the activities. So I'm gonna create um, another activity. So Netflix is another activity we offer. So we offer this for smart TVs that support Netflix um, with an IR command, or we also uh, provide this for Roku users. So Sony has a Netflix button, so we automatically will launch the Netflix. Um, I'm gonna hit test later. So again, very easy. I just selected the TV and we automatically set it to Netflix. So Roku, of course, for Roku, we also provide, just like Sonos and um, Watch TV, we provide favorites. So I'm gonna just uh, set up the um, Harmony here. So this room, um, uh, it's the first day that I've been using this room, so I actually have to guess which input the Roku is connected to. Hopefully, I'm guessing the media player, because this was set up uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, during the holiday, so bear with me for this. Okay, we might have to skip over um, in the uh, Roku. Uh, so Roku, I do apologize, may have not been connected yet. Uh, this room uh, is brand new. And again, uh, we'll leave the uh, input um, as is for now. And I'm just gonna go through the, uh, the actual creating of the activity. And then see I've set up my inputs for the Roku. We're just gonna confirm yes. What I just wanna briefly show here for the Roku activity is just like um, the Sonos experience, we also provide favorite channels. And this really allows you to create these uh, unique activities uh, for your customers. So you can actually create a Sling TV activity as well where we automatically will launch the uh, Sling app so not just Roku, but we'll actually go to the app. Uh, you know, another example is maybe you want an Amazon video activity. Um, had I select Netflix, we would have automatically set it to Netflix. So again, a great example of where we can, um, with a touch of a button, just take it to another level by launching uh, the customer's favorite app. Um, as you can see, I called it once Roku. Again, you can edit that. You can give it a different icon, as you can see here. There's there's different icons available, and you can, of course, um, rename it to Watch Sling TV. Hang on, just bear with me here. All right. Sorry. Close the door there. Okay, so we have the watch sling activity created. So you can see here all my activities that I have added. I'm gonna just click on the add activity. As I mentioned, you may have a scenario where you wanna create a custom activity, as we would call it. We kind of got away of that word because most of the activities we're recommending and creating on the fly. But an example would be, maybe you have an IP cam set up for your customer on a specific, um, you know, input, so you could say, um, you know, you may want to call it, you know, front door or front door camera. So these are um, examples where you may want to set up a manual activity, you can, you know, give it an icon and so forth, and then you can select the devices manually. So in this case, it's just going to be a TV. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a form of watching TV, so I'm gonna hit that. And then I'm gonna select, uh, in this case, maybe that uh, device is set up on um, uh, video one. So there's nothing connected, but just for an example. 
And there you have your custom activity. So now we've created uh, seven activities from uh, playing a game to watching TV to using your smart TV and so forth. So we're going to move on to the next section of the setup. And that's where we're uh, configuring the home control buttons, uh, as I mentioned. So now that we've created our groups, we can easily assign them. So the top button we can um, assign to perhaps, um, let's do um, all the lights in the living room and dining room, for instance. And the bottom, let's assign that one to the kitchen. And the top right plug we can <clears throat> assign to the blinds and then the bottom one this could for instance a, could be a u scene i haven't set up a scene but you could do that specifically so a very easy way of quickly turning on uh, the groups uh, with you know a press uh, of a button and it shows uh, what the short and the long press uh, does and uh, increasing the brightness and so forth um, and, uh, you know, if you do this to blinds, then the rocker button will, um, of course, um, raise the blinds or lower them. So now that I've uh, configured my um, home control buttons, the setup has been completed. As you can see, it's powering off all the uh, entertainment devices. And you'll see that the uh, remote is uh, waiting to be synced now. So it's going to trigger that. So you can see the app is automatically launching the um, configuration that we just programmed. And as it's downloading all the channels and so forth, the Harmony Elite right now um, is um, syncing the configuration. And what you can see here, what we've recently added is a progress bar. So you can actually see the sync time that's uh, required. So before we get to the Elite, I'm just going to show you the app. Um, so we have here the, uh, the phone app that has all my activities, the, um, and it has a quick tap for devices. So the devices, uh, when it comes to the AV devices, not really necessary to use for your customers because, again, it's an activity-based remote. However, for the lights and blinds, it's, it's great to have this quick access because I can turn off all the light groups that I've created here. Um, I just left that one light on because that's a Z-Wave light, which we're not covering in this webinar. We'll have a separate uh, webinar on our home hub extender. So, but again, you can see very easy. You can turn on all these lights, or I can decide maybe um, I want to adjust the specific uh, group of lights. So we have, for instance, here the living, dining room light. So if I hold it, give it a long press, I can very easily you know, dim them and brighten them again or if I decide maybe I want to change uh, the color scheme on it a bit you can apply that to all lights so again very easy way of uh, adjusting your lights and simply like applying it to the group uh, as well And then we have the same thing for our blinds. So we have uh, our shades here. I'm just going to move that around quickly with the camera. Bear with me here. We have the room here. And this is where we have our blind set up. So, sorry, the webcam got all angled there. So, I got the kitchen blinds there. So, that's the left shades. So, if I. Um, Move the lever up, you can see that the blinds are going up. You there. And if I move it down, again, a very easy way to adjust it. And uh, perhaps maybe I want both blinds halfway. So now it's also adjusting the blinds here. So again, very easy way of controlling uh, your shades as well. Um, of course, you want to also incorporate them um, into uh, your customers' activities. So that's, that's the device control, very easy. As you can see, I have all my activities here that can be launched. 
um, on the mobile app. Um, we also have a, a specific uh, tablet version that can be used. I'm just going to quickly uh, switch to that hub. So as you can see, of course, your customer could have multiple hubs. So you can uh, select a room um, that you've set up. I'm going to just connect to that hub here. As you can see, it's downloading the configuration. This is the first time connecting. It just needs to retrieve everything. As you can see, all the activities are here as well. Um, so this would be very uh, convenient if um, a customer, for instance, has a dedicated uh, tablet in the room uh, where they can just you know, quickly access uh, their Harmony uh, as well. All right, so now that we've set up the Harmony, we can, um, I'm gonna turn off the uh, little tutorial, so we'll put a check mark there, so yeah, the customer no longer sees uh, the tutorial. And we got all the activities uh, here. Again, the activities are listed here. They can also be rearranged very easily by um, hitting the little edit button on the remote. And maybe that front door camera I want lower and so forth. So I'm just gonna turn off most of the lights here. There we go. And what we're gonna do is, let's start with Watch TV. So it just shows the devices that it's powering on, the TV, the lights are turning on, the AV receiver is set to uh, cable SAT. Um, I did, however, um, Forgot to mention that um, what I wanted to show is I didn't set the input right for that activity um, because there is an ability what I want to show you here. I'm just going to bring this up here. So on the remote, you hit the gear wrench and you can edit the activities. So I went into the settings on the remote. So it was just hitting the gear, and then I went to the settings, and it was set to video one. And I want to switch that to HDMI 3. So you can use the mobile app to change that, or you can actually use the Harmony. So I'm going to just set it to HDMI 3 now. And that will correct it. So I, if I would quickly press help for instance, it will automatically fire HDMI 3. So now the activity has been programmed correctly. So if you decide to do some wiring um, at the last minute and wanna change it, of course you can change this on the Harmony app by using, going through the Harmony setup. Um, however, some of these features can actually be done on the remote, uh, which I'll be covering in another webinar more in depth. A lot of uh, changes can be done here um, there can also be a settings lock, so your customer will not change that. So we've got the uh, Watch TV activity here. So the other great feature is, of course, you can see it's on the History Channel now. I got my uh, favorites programmed right here. So, you know, with a push of a button, it, uh, it can switch uh, the favorites. The other great feature is if I turn everything off now, and I, again, I've told it not to mess with the lights, only to turn on the lights when I start the activity, but don't turn them off. Um, the favorite channel page actually allows you to launch ESPN from an off state. So I can go right to the favorites and launch ESPN. So we'll turn on the TV, set it to HDMI 3, switch the input on the AVR, and then also switch um, the TV to ESPN. So right now it's on 140, which is ESPN. So again, not a great feature. And while I'm watching TV, if I want to now switch to smart TV, the Harmony will automatically launch the smart UI, and I can you know, easily navigate um, my smart TV uh, Android uh, platform there that we uh, have on this uh, Sony TV. So that's a great way of you know, going using your smart TV. And again, very easily I can switch back to um, watching my dish. Again, as you can see, it's powering everything off. This can, um, I've done that deliberately, because really for this activity, this is maybe something you don't want, and that can be changed. So you can change the behavior with activity transitions, uh, something I'll be um, covering in another webinar where we can actually 
do a little bit more programming to make switching from one activity more um, set for your customers' uh, needs and so forth. So there we have the different activities. Um, again, if I do the um, listen to dining uh, room for the Sonos, it's of course gonna power off the TV and um, control the Sonos. Again, right now nothing is playing, but you can see here is, uh, I have the favorite channels for Sonos that uh, can be very easily accessed with a push of a button and then it will start uh, playing the Sonos uh, activity uh, on the now playing screen. And of course, um, the Xbox, lastly, just quickly show, again, we got the Xbox turning on everything, um, turning off the Sonos and setting it to more of a, a green light theme. Again, it's just a quick example of some of the, the cool things uh, that you can do. The other uh, thing is you can um, go ahead and switch back to watch TV and I will put the uh, lights back to uh, warm. That's another great uh, example of um, using um, different light scenes uh, for different activities. And I left the Sonos on between the activity um, in the initial program. However, that can, of course, be changed as well. Or you can go into the device mode and pause it um, as well. So you have you can actually very easily uh, switch back and forth. So that's the uh, Harmony Elite setup. Again, as you can see, uh, in the matter of uh, you know, 20 minutes, you have a complete configuration that you can then, uh, you know, uh, tweak a little bit more for uh, your customer. So I'm just going to turn off the equipment and I'm going to unmute the mic here. Now uh, we have a section that we can cover some of the, the Q&A. So just bear with me for a moment. All right, everyone is there's some feedback there. Um, yeah, if you uh, have a chatty baby in the background, maybe you want to mute it until you have a question. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just want to take the time and make sure that, you know, hopefully everyone has a chance to uh, register and uh, just take a couple minutes uh, to answer any questions you may have if there's something uh, I might kind of rush through. Again, there's only so much we can cover in an hour. Uh, so more than happy to answer some questions or maybe some feedback. I have a question. Yeah, go right ahead. Uh, is it a uh, is it possible to put some type of uh, what is it's a three point five jack for those mini flashers, right? Yes, a very good question. Um, yeah, let me dig, jump right on that. So the current hub. Let me just uh, let me grab a hub. Just bear with me for a second. <laughs> So yeah, the, the hub itself um, has two ports that are uh, 2.5. Um, of course, uh, in the industry, uh, primarily it's uh, 3.5 that is used. Um, however, adapters uh, purchase can definitely work. Um, is 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 the hub capable of doing multiple mini flashers out of one port? Yeah. Um, what I'm going to do is this is Omar, right? Do you have on, on the mic? Sorry. Yeah, it's Omar. Okay, so I'm just gonna. There we go. I was just trying to find the background noise uh, on the iPhone. So. Um, yeah, to your question, so the ports can be assigned. So you can assign what you want to control with the blaster. Um, so if I, I, right now I went to setup, so if I go to the remote and hub, uh, I can go right into IR assignments. Um, and you can um, assign these devices. So... Um, but but what, my, my question is, out of one of those mini flasher ports, if I put a 3.5 that splits it, can I run two mini flashers off one port? Yes, you can. So what we have, we have a precision kit. 
on the Harmony Precision Kit, uh, which Dow will be carrying as well. Okay. Um, so that's not the standard mini blasters that come equipped uh, right now. So actually, let me grab that very quickly. Okay. So we understand, like, you know, by default, you know, out of the box, we have these mini blasters. Let me, uh, so these are the mini blasters that we have. Thank you very much. Turn on the button. We have a, a master switch that uh, has a motion sensor. So we have the mini blaster here by default. However, the precision kit comes with two, um, and each of them um, have has, uh, its IR precision emitters that you can actually attach uh, to the devices. And then, are those currently available? Yeah, Dow carries them. It's the precision IR kit. I believe they have them in stock now. Um, okay. Um, so they are on our website, but I believe that the DAO should be uh, now as well. So just have right, to ask for the precision IR kit. And what you could do, you could say maybe you, you connect a couple of devices to port one and a couple to port two. So you get less IR flooding. Okay, great. Great. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, of course, to mention that even if the IR is assigned to multiple devices, we have a thing called inter-device delay. Now, what does that mean? We make sure that we um, don't set all the commands right away between some devices. So, as we understand, there is a bit of a timeout. So, we, we, you know, we put 500 milliseconds between most of them. And if it's a really slow device, we give it a second and a half. Again, that's all covered in our database. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Good question. Any other questions? Anyone else? No, no more uh, no questions, uh, feedback, remarks, pain points, and now we've got, we got a couple minutes here uh, to get anything off your back, harmony related uh, or something. Well, yeah. like that. I got one more question for you. What's the maximum range that your uh, Harmony Elite can be from the from the the blaster for it to communicate with the hub? Oh yeah, from the um, I think you're asking about. Let me just confirm the range from the Elite to the hub. How far yes. it can be apart? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So that question is a good question. It really depends on your environment. I mean, it can go up to 100 feet, but that's ideal kind of open scenario. Um, it's anywhere from 30 to 100 feet, depending how many walls, um, how many floors, and so forth. Uh, okay. There are sometimes uh, limitations. Um, it, it all depends on your environment. Uh, that being said, um, of course, the, the mobile app will communicate almost anywhere in the house because of the fact that you're using Wi-Fi. Oh, okay. Great, great. Yeah, and you can switch between that. The other thing is I, I've seen that, um, and on some really large houses, of course, um, you know, these the mini blasters, you know, um, of course, there's only so much length, but I've seen installers use Cat6, just cut the ends uh, and put it on Cat6. Um, actually, I've done that myself once as a project, and it works fine. Yeah, we did that. We did on a project where we had the rack. It was way beyond 30 feet. So we put the, the hub behind the television and used Cat5 to extend the blasters over to the rack. And, ah, and it seems like yeah, that, that's that's the best uh, solution, uh, keeping the hub in the living room. With the TV, just be careful that it's not too close to, to some of the circuit board because it can interfere. Oh, okay. But yeah, I, I wasn't aware. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I've seen that, that happen. Uh, but it, it, that's definitely uh, that's the best so, uh, solution, uh, that most definitely. So, good, to, good, good to hear. Um, I had a question. Yeah, go right ahead. Um, when it discovers a smart TV, is it then going to communicate to the smart TV through the Wi-Fi, or does it use the IR signal? We uh, that's that's an excellent question. And today we are still using IR. We're only 
um, discovering it through IP. Um, the devices that we can uh, communicate through, like entertainment devices through IP, currently is Dish that we do, uh, Roku, and Sonos. That being said, it is definitely something that's on our roadmap. And it's exactly something we are starting to look into. Um, some of the challenges with IP control is not every device allows to be powered on. So some smart TVs that we've seen in the field, and hopefully with the newer models this has changed, won't allow you to power them on over time. Uh, so that's something where I'm, I'm actually researching that experience, and it's something we're definitely looking into. I think AVRs is another great example where there is a big opportunity for us uh, there. So, and like, I, as I mentioned, I, I hope everyone filled in the registration link. There's a little checkbox there that's only designed for, basically I'll be orchestrating um, some small round tables uh, to hear from, from installers like you and, and what is important uh, to you and what, what kind of features would you like to see and, uh, and so forth. Well, it's good at least that it has the um, discrete power and input commands for a while the libraries were getting a little off and only small toggle commands no definitely discrete so um as i mentioned my role I, I do many things i mean you know focusing on the cdia channel i actually do store visits in uh, north america and in europe where i actually make sure that um some of the retailers that all every brand new sony samsung Visio insignia and any of these TVs are accurately in our database and also doing a lot of research and sharing that with our team Making sure that we have discrete, but sometimes we're trying to find discrete commands for picture modes and, and other things that you guys can benefit from So that, that's definitely is something we we're very aggressive with the other thing that you may not know is that our database which carries more than 8 million users is a database that we monitor and if we see that more than 15 people are making a change to a device, we get a flag and it goes to an actual um, device analyst and they will start researching, oh, if someone's changing it from toggle to discrete, we'll promote that and so forth. So it's, it's on, uh, ongoing and evolving um, every day, basically. And were you going to talk about dealer accounts today? Yes, thank you for bringing it up and that uh, you passed the test. That was actually more to see uh, if people noted that. So, yes, I um, so bo bonus points right there. But yeah, that being said, you know, we used to have a dealer uh, page uh, back in the day for our products. It's, it's not something we, uh, we currently have. Uh, we understand that this is a pain point. And this is something we're definitely looking in. Uh, you know, I'm not going to promise any dates or, or and, and so forth, but it's um, you know we uh, there, there's a reason why we're starting to do these webinars. We you know we want to show the capabilities of, of Harmony, but we also want to make things um, easier um, for you guys. And I, we understand that a dealer page is, is something that is is quite important um, to, to manage your customers. So. Um, and of course, you know, when we look at the past, like I said, I've been there for 10 years. I, I've worked with our dealer page in the past. Um, we have a lot of great ideas on how we can improve on that. Um, keeping you guys more in the loop. Like, as I mentioned, right, we just integrated with Hunter Douglas. Um, so there's constantly new releases where we uh, add new capabilities. So this is something you could maybe communicate in the dealer page. Um, so not just make it uh, for listing your account, but also give it as a communication form uh, to you um, and also provide feedback on your end. So maybe maybe you have a device in the field that you're constantly changing because it might not be accurate in our database, maybe giving you that, that kind of capability to forward that directly to the team. Because, you know, anytime I talk to an installer in the field, I fix it within 24 hours. It's, it's escalated and it's done. So that's uh, definitely things we're looking at. Um, on improving it and making things easier for you guys so great question well i hope you keep the dealer page for a while because i sometimes use it to access login ids for i've got over 500 customers you know that's not going away we can't we can't take that away so but we need to make one for our new products and okay. um, it needs to be better so we we need to we we're always raising the bar we've uh, you know 
come a long way since then. As you can see, are the different integrations, the different technologies that we're using, um, and really simplifying the setup. So, and, and that's something we're constantly uh, working on, really trying to make a setup uh, easier and then making it easier and you know less time consuming, right? So, like when you're out in the field, you want to make sure that you you know have enough time to get everything set up and not. Uh, spent so much time tinkering with the setup. So that's something we're really trying to save you from doing. So that way you can really focus on creating these activities like dinner time for your customer or customized uh, TV activities and so forth. Excellent. Everyone for their time.